Well, I don't know if you've heard the news, but I want you to know I have a brand new podcast and I want to invite you to take a listen. I'm the good thing. The podcast is the place where we unpack life wisdom. We pray, we affirm, and most of all, we discover our true beauty, our worth, and our power. You see, I'm all about helping women build a life they love, and I know that begins with us believing everything good about who we are. Now, the format of I'm the Good Thing is a bit different. While it's a sister podcast to Embrace Your Power, it is a bite-sized version of life-winning wisdom to help you change the game. These five-minute episodes are designed for you to be able to listen while you do your makeup or listen while you have your coffee or even listen on the drive into work. I want you to energize your day in a God kind of way. And I'm the good thing is the motivation you need. New episodes release on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays to help you power through the week. Now take a listen to I'm the good thing and be encouraged in your journey. On the journey to success, you will likely have to face obstacles. I know in my journey, I have. I faced obstacles that oftentimes came to distract me, deter me, and even deplete me. I want you to know that it's in you to overcome. It's in you to persevere, and you will absolutely be rewarded. But what is necessary in order for you to achieve those successes is diligence and a deeper resolve. Sometimes the obstacles that we face have very little to do with outside people. They have a lot to do with how we see ourselves and the baggage we bring from our past. But the same holds true. Your ability to be diligent and to deepen your resolve will give you everything that you need to overcome the challenges. Now let's get into it. For the longest time, I secretly wanted more. I often found myself shrinking to fit in, settling for what was comfortable and even selling myself short. Once I finally accepted that we deserve success and we are blessed with the power to achieve it, I stopped playing small. I'm serious about building a life I love and you should be too. I'm Denise Taylor of DeniseTaylor.live and welcome to Embrace Your Power. I help women prioritize themselves, their success, and their happiness. Now let's meet this week's achiever whose story will inspire you to embrace your power and go. Well, hello there. It's Denise Taylor here. You know, I'm always excited to welcome you to Embrace Your Power. You see, this is the place where you can count on me to encourage you to build a life that you love. More than that, I believe that God has given us the power to do it. We can shake off fear. You see, in the word of God, he says he didn't give us fear. He gave us power. And when we embrace our power, we can be, do, have, and achieve anything that we want. Now, I will tell you, I believe you'll be divinely inspired to go after the things that'll bring you long lasting fulfillment and satisfaction. Those things are going to make you feel real good inside. Now, I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube or perhaps you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, but this is the place where I get energized each and every Thursday because I know I'll get a chance to be connected with you. And if you haven't yet left a five-star review, what are you waiting on? By all means, make that your gift back to me. You see, when you do that, you set us up to reach other people with all all the good stuff going on here. Now, if you've been tuned into the podcast for the last few weeks, then you know I have been sharing conversations that I have had from the guest chair. You see, sometimes I get the opportunity to be a guest on other podcasts, and those conversations are always phenomenal. And so I wanted in this season to give you a chance to hear my opportunity 
to share my experiences. And I know that they are going to be a blessing to you. Now, today you're going to hear a phenomenal conversation that I had recently with NECA Anderson. You see, she's in the process of launching a brand new podcast, Reshape the Soul. And I know that that is going to be a platform to bless so many people. And I wanted you to hear this incredible conversation that I had with NECA about overcoming obstacles in the pursuit of purpose. It's going to be a blessing to you. And in this season where we're getting ready to go into a new year and take on our opportunity to go to the next level, this is exactly what we need to hear to energize our journey. And so I pray that it's a blessing to you and I will look forward to your feedback. By all means, DM me and let me know what sticks out the most. So take a listen now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Reshape the Soul. As you know, we have been talking about obstacles to walking in our purpose, and I am super excited to have Denise Taylor with us today. She is going to share with us the kind of obstacles that she's been had to walk through, what she's been able to do to continue to walk in purpose, because let's be honest, we answer the call, right? We answer that call. We want to do our best to walk in the purpose that we know that God has given us, but life does not stop happening when we do that. Um, and so a lot of times there's obstacles that come up and it really can be discouraging and it can be uh, a barrier to us to continue. And so I wanted to talk with some people who I know are really pushing through, who are walking in purpose, who are out here still doing it, even though we know life is still happening. How are they walking through the obstacles that they have faced and getting to the purpose that God has given them. And so, Denise, thank you so much for being here today. I just want to uh, honor you for taking the time to be with, in, with us and share with us what you've done to be able to continue to answer the call that God's given you over your life. And if you wouldn't mind, if you could just share some things about yourself, who you are, what you do, how you show up to serve, and then we'll jump right into the questions. Well, you know, Neka, I want to say thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to sit in the guest seat. Yes. So I am, um, you know, as you were talking, I have to tell you, I'm just on an incredible journey with God. Um, I'm discovering a lot along the way. Um, where I started, it has evolved. And I'm grateful that I allowed myself to be open to the process um, it absolutely hasn't been easy, but I will tell you, there has been nothing like the satisfaction and fulfillment that has come from serving. So as a context, I help women build a life that they love, right? So for me, my initial message was around serving women in the context of relationships. And boy, has it ever evolved from there. As I started serving in that whole notion of God gives you more on the way than he does at the start, he certainly did that for me. He gave me more purpose and more meaning and he expanded the context in the focus. The seat that I sit in right now is around embracing our power. That's my favorite phrase is I want us to embrace our power. And that comes from the scripture that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, mm. but that he's given us power. And I believe that when we embrace our power, we can be, do, have, and achieve the things that we want. And so my goal is to help us get past all of those things standing in the way of us enjoying our life, you know, enjoying our experience of life. The other thing that I believe is that God, really did say we could have life more abundantly. And yeah. when he said that, he meant that. And so there really isn't any limitations other than the ones that we set. So when you start talking about obstacles to walking in purpose, this is an excellent place to anchor in because some of those obstacles are the very things that keep us from experiencing the best that God wants us to enjoy. And so I just consider myself the person that's there championing us to really evolve and become who we believe God is inspiring us, divinely inspiring us to be. Amazing. Yes, that is so that is so amazing because it's really true. We are the ones who often 
allow those obstacles to keep us from experiencing that abundance. And it really is sometimes a skill set to learn how to release those things and overcome those obstacles, which is why it's so, it's so important that we're talking to you today, because we need to hear from people who are making those leaps and bounds, right? So that we don't feel alone, so that we don't feel like it's a, a lost cause or that we can't, we need to give up. And so just wonderful that you are in this space. And I'm so happy that you are our champion and you out here, you know, helping us understand how we can get through those obstacles. I guess the first question I really want to ask is what even started you on this process? What even started you uh, on the path to saying, hey, I, I feel this pull. I feel like I have a call from God. I feel like there's something that I'm supposed to be doing. How did you get started just answering the call from the beginning? From the beginning. So it's kind of funny because I, in the fall of 2019, I had surgery and I was at home recuperating. I was home for eight weeks. And what was interesting about the time is both of our daughters were away at school and my husband was working very crazy hours, like extreme long days. And I'm not much of a television person, like I'll watch it from time to time. But what I really found in that eight week window, it was like I was at a silence camp, like I was in the house, there wasn't any noise, and it was really quiet. And for me, I don't think my life has ever throttled down to be that still, Right. Because one of the things that was a trauma response for me was keeping myself busy, like always having something going, always having an agenda. And so for me to get to the point where I'm recognizing silence is a really big deal. Right. And so in that stillness, I really had a sense that God was calling me to more. In fact, the notion that he gave me then is the one that I still pursue now. Mm. So while I am standing up to say I help women build a life that they love, the calling for me was God said he needed me to transcend success and be significant. And what significance meant was that I needed to serve, that I needed to help other people. And so at that time, I felt that in my spirit, in my knower, like, it was so real to me that he was like, it's time for you to really begin to serve others. Now for myself, because of my experiences, I was kind of in the scene, but not, right? Mm -hmm. I knew how to exist in places, but not have too much, you know, uh, meat on the bone, not to have too much involvement, be in there, but not really in there. I knew how to do that very well. I call that hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew how to do that really well. And so it wasn't that I didn't have successful experiences because I did. I lived a very blessed life, but I knew in that moment that God was calling me to greater. And so it kind of started, like I mentioned with me, just making myself available to try to help other other women and the context of relationship. And that's kind of how I dipped my toe into the pond. But I will tell you, when I started doing that, there was something uniquely different. You see, professionally, I knew how to hit marks. I knew how to hit goals. I knew how to, you know, make those performance reports show what they needed to show. And so I knew what success felt like. But when I started helping other people, the sense of fulfillment was way different. And so one of the things that I love to express it as is that God changed my appetite for success. Mm. It was no longer about, did you hit the performance goal? Did you achieve the revenue goals? It became about, are you making a difference in someone's life? What kind of testimonies are coming as a result of the work that you're doing? Can you look at somebody and know that you help them get through that? And once I had a taste of fulfillment that way, I tried to go back to the other and it just wasn't the same. I don't know if you've ever ate greens cooked by somebody who really knows how to throw down oh, and yeah. cook greens, right? <laughs> and then when you go back and you have some from somebody else, you say to yourself, it just don't taste the same. Like no. something is missing. No, something, something is missing. Wrong. 
Yeah. And that's kind of how I felt when I tried to re-energize, when I entered back into work after being off from leave, when I tried to go back to that same, you know, process that I used to have, it just didn't feel the same. And so that was the biggest overall call, if you will. And it's the one that I'm still in fast pursuit of, right? Because God has really impressed upon me the necessity to be significant in the lives of others. And that means being seen, being heard, and showing up with life-changing resources. Woo, that, woo. <laughs> that is, that's a lot because I heard so many nuggets in there about one, first of all, yes, significance, changing that mindset from the just being successful, but really being significant and then recognizing your own significance. I will have to say that that was part of my journey as well. I had to really get in touch with the fact that I, first of all, already had significance in God without performance. And then I could show up in the way that you were talking about. You know, I did that hiding in plain sight thing, you know, where it's like, I'm, I'm dipping my toe in, like you said, I'm dipping my toe in the water. Mm -hmm. So I'm there, my name is on the roster, but it's really not on the roster the way it should be. It's like way down here, but really, you know, deep inside of you, you you have the potential to show up in, in a greater way. And so That is amazing. Just being able to talk about how you are showing up significantly. Now, I had to write this down. You said God helped you to change your appetite for success. Mm -hmm. That is so huge because I think a lot of times we are confused by what we, there's so much information coming in and we can be confused by what success means and what success looks like. Mm -hmm. And so when we allow ourselves to be able to tap into what God is telling us about the success for us, he created us as unique individuals. And as far as that, you know, as just as much as there's success for everyone, right? There's a generalized concept of success. There's individual success for you. Your time is at your time. It might not be the same time as someone else's. And so just having God speak to you in a way that says, no daughter, this is what success looks like for you right now. And then tomorrow I'll let you know what success looks like for you to that on that day, you know, just tapping into being able to hear God speak to you in a way that you allow that to change your appetite for success is, is huge. That, that was really, um, a great point. So I had to write that one down. Um, I guess my next uh, question would be, what kind of obstacles did you have to face or have you faced or, you know, if you would like to share or facing even now that you continuously have to uh, make a decision, I guess I would say, to overcome those obstacles, to continue to walk in the purpose that God's given you. So I was thinking about this a lot, you know, because I want to be real intentional about the journey towards purpose and what kind of stood in my way. I met a lot of obstacles, but the ones that I would call out the most was limiting beliefs. Um, My traumatic background really made me think very low of myself. And as a result, it didn't matter that the achievements were happening. It still didn't make my confidence grow in a way that made me feel assured. And so overcoming limiting beliefs is something that I still work at now. Like I had to train myself how to go after them. And the biggest way has been me beginning to see myself the way God sees me. What's interesting about this is earlier this week, I was on a CEO panel, right? And and the interviewer asked me my thoughts around faking it to make it. Mm -hmm. And my response to her was, conceptually, I understand what they're saying. But in my case, I lean into the truth of who God says I am. And there's nothing fake about that. That is truth. And so as a result, 
I'm not faking anything. I am who God says I am. And so when I war against the perspective of not being good enough, or I war against the perspective of, of not being valued or not being worthy, and all of those things that really crash in to make you feel as though you don't belong or that you are a fraud in some sense, I combat those with who God says I am. So when I show up saying I'm more than a conqueror, I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that because that's what God said about me. When I show up to say I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that because that's what God says about me. And as a result, it helps to diminish the impact of those limiting beliefs. But here's the thing we have to remember. Whatever got to us first became our truth, even if it was a lie. And so those limiting beliefs got to me first as a result of the experiences that I had. And now I have to spend time uprooting those lies so that the truth can come in. And that is a daily process for me. So what does that look like? That looks like reminding myself what God says about me. That looks like affirming the things and the truths that he says in his word about me, believing him at a greater degree, making sure that I protect my ear gates and my eye gates so that that I'm not consuming things that feed into those lesser perspectives of who I am. And so that was one of the first obstacles. The next obstacle is one that I, um, I really had to reconcile within myself. And I'm not sure that I'm completely clear why I struggled with it. But when you look at my family history, we are a long time like legacy of entrepreneurs. But it was something that I ran from as fast as I could. I just did not want to be considered an entrepreneur. It was almost like I was giving up my birthright. Like I'm giving up the very thing that has been a mainstay in my family. And I'm not exactly sure why. I'm sure it has something to do with a lot of the familiar experiences that I had and how they kind of fed into some of the upbringing challenges that I faced. But I had to reckon with the fact that that's in me. That's mm -hmm. a part of my DNA. That's who God graced our family to be. And there's a blessing in it for me. And so for as much as I fought it off, the obstacle was I refused to accept it as a truth. And so I'm working towards that and I'm getting better with it of actually saying I'm an entrepreneur because I wouldn't even say that before. And then finally, the last one, and this is something you may relate to, it kind of feeds into the, that whole stop uh, hiding in plain sight, but I had to get over the fact that I just didn't want to be bothered, right? Yeah. You know, um, I had experiences with people. I had disappointments with people. They let me down. I had hurts. I had all of these things from relationships with people. And I had created this perspective in my mind that I just did not want to be bothered. Now, if we go back to what God said for me to do, which was be significant, that meant I was going to have to create some relationships with people. And so I had to get past that longstanding boundary that I had. Now, the one thing that's important about boundaries is I believe that they're nece necessary for a period of time. They are a great protective mechanism, but until you remove the boundary some to see if you've healed enough to actually step, step into that space, the boundary can keep you bound. Mm -hmm. And so the boundary of me saying I didn't want to be bothered probably was legit at one point in time, yeah. but chances are it outlived its stay. And I had healed and matured enough that I could eliminate that and really seek relationship. So one of the things that I know to be true is that God created us for a relationship. And when we fight against that, we are fighting against where our blessing lies. God said he's going to have men bless your bosom, which meant that you're going to have to have relationship with people in, for, mm -hmm. in order for the blessing to come to you. And so those probably are the three like obstacles that I really had to fight. And all of them was in me. None of those obstacles had to do with anything on the outside of me, anything that was rising up against me, it was all an internal struggle. You know what? When you talked about the limiting beliefs and and call them out as lies, that 
is that was really um, powerful because I think that's really what we fail to see is that just because it's something that we believe, it doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it has any weight in the in the kingdom of God and how God sees us and how God created us and wants us to develop. And so calling them out as actual lies, first of all, gives us the opportunity to be able to say, well, you know what? If it's a lie, that means I can reject it. Mm -hmm. That means I don't have to accept it. That means I don't have to continue to operate in it and walk in it and listen to it and allow it to direct me and, you know, show up and just, and, and allow it to take up space in my world without having some kind of rebuttal for it. And so calling that out, like these limiting beliefs uh, that to me, that's sometimes it's really a euphemism for this is just a flat out lie. Now the lie could have been planted there, like you said, because of experiences that we had. And I, I share that with you and that early on, very early on experiences taught me what to think about myself but those teachings were not true. And so the only way to combat those teachings was to go to the one and ask him, well, what, who am, what, do I, what, do I, who am I? And what am I? And what do you think about me? And what do you say about me? And then replacing that lie with the truth is how you, you know, make progress to walking out of that. And so that is so powerful that first of all, we got to get rid of those lies. We got to, uh, we have to uh, confront them as lies uh, to in the beginning and, and to really, address them as a lie then you said that you didn't want you didn't want to be bothered and i had to i had to chuckle a little bit on that one because i was like "Ooh, the conviction because that is where i was also did not want to be bothered knew that because of relationships with people i had uh gotten really comfortable turning within myself and didn't want to be bothered but god was like but that that's selfish mm -hmm. because he i placed something inside of you that other people need mm -hmm. so um you don't get to say <laughs> that you don't want to be bothered we're gonna go on and you know let's go on and get this healed so that you can show up um so that is i definitely don't want to gloss over that Sometimes a lot of us feel like we don't want to be bothered because of the impact that relationships have had on us. And that is truly an obstacle, particularly if you're in the space of helping other people heal in some form or fashion so that they could do the thing that God has told them to do. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's going to be an obstacle for you is that you're not going to want to be bothered. You're not going to want to show up fully in the way. Uh, and when you feel that, that should be an indication that, oh, this is this is something that the enemy is trying to do because I know I'm supposed to be showing up. I just don't feel like it, you know, and I'm really behaving based on the pain that I've experienced before. So that was super powerful. I really appreciate you bringing that out. Mm -hmm. I know you've kind of talked about it already a little bit here and, you know, there you enter, you've laced it in, in into the, your, your uh, responses before, but I really want to get to some of the strategic things that you do um, when it comes to overcoming these obstacles? And and is it something that you do as a daily practice? Is it something that you just kind of keep running in the background now? How do you approach and recognize, okay, this is something that's trying to knock me off my game. Mm -hmm. I need to address it with this. So I'll add a couple of other things that I do. So I talk a lot about the success superpowers, right? And, and the fourth success superpower is take care of you. And mm -hmm. the unfortunate thing that we have not been taught is to how is really how to take care of ourselves fully, right? We have relegated take care of you to going to the nail salon and getting a manicure and getting a yeah. pedicure. Yeah. And while I am a nail girl, there is far more to me than just my toes and nails. And so one of the things that I'm very intentional about 
is forging the relationships that's going to help the total package of Denise. So what does that mean? That means I have a mentor relationship, someone who is encouraging me to rise and go to the next level, serving as an example and almost as iron sharpening iron. When, when I come into her presence, I feel cut every time because she is calling me to a higher degree, a higher standard. And for me, I've been real intentional about making sure that person is calling me to a higher standard in God, yes. like calling me to a higher standard of spirituality. And so that's a very prized seat for me because I have so many other like capabilities and talents. Otherwise, I want to make sure that the person who's sitting in the seat to mentor me has that as a primary objective and role. Another thing I'm real intentional about is a life coach. Some people go for therapy. I have a life coach. Finding a place where I can really unpack what's going on in my mind is a very prized relationship. And because I had that, I don't want to be bothered attitude for so long, I discounted how powerful it was. And my biggest regret is that I did not forge this relationship far sooner in my life. I have made exponential strides because I have lifted that burden and weight of things that I was secretly carrying within myself. Yeah. The one thing about being seen, heard, and showing up is that it's going to make you begin to really assess your authenticity. And I had some things that I had to deal with that was going on within me. And I just kind of turned a blind eye to them. I, I was real good at compartmentalizing. And so part of taking care of me is really taking a, a, a like a true look at myself and saying, what do you need to work through? And it's so funny because every time before my next call with my life coach, I'm thinking, oh, I don't need her anymore. This is going to be the last one. And by the time we finish, I'm like, oh my God, I got so much stuff to work through. And so <laughs> it is a safe place for me to really just discover those things that I never wanted to give voice to, but that was so important to my healing journey. The other thing that is really intentional is making sure that I give priority to places where I know God's going to meet me. Now mm -hmm. for me, one of the things I started doing when I was the primary caregiver for my mom before she passed away, she was staying with us in the home and I would often have caregivers come and be attentive to her so that I had just a break, right? And part of my break was going on walks. And what I discovered back to that whole still quietness when I go yeah. on walks, it's almost like I'm back to that point in time when I was home on medical leave. And in those still moments, God greets me without fail. He greets me on my walks. And so I prioritize going to that space, going to that place where I know he's going to meet me. So and I think we have to do that because oftentimes we get busy. He meets me at my prayer table. He meets me on my walk. So what that means is I need to spend time with him and I know where he's typically going to meet me at. Mm. So I need to show up there and prioritize being there. So those are some additional things that I do um, to help feed into making sure I'm progressing well. Yes, phenomenal. Like I had to write down, um, first of all, and we've had conversations about this before about not doing it alone or, or feeling like, okay, everything that you've done to this point, okay, that's great, but you can't take yourself any further by yourself. You have to get other people on board that are not only going to help propel you forward, but that are aligned with you. So talking about the people that are going to be, you know, the people that you talk to who are going to be helping you to not just unpack some of the things that are going on in your head, but to also give you a higher sense of uh, uh, reaching for a higher sense of spirituality, connecting with God, aligned with sharing the word with you, aligned with sharing what God is speaking to you. Because a lot of times we hear so much noise, right? For ourselves, you know, being able to decipher it, it's too much. We need someone from the outside to come in and speak calm, speak peace, speak love, speak truth that we can't hear at the moment because we have so many things going on in our head. And until we unpack that and find someone who's aligned with us to be able to do that, 
that is what really helps to propel us forward. So that's phenomenal that you 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 call that out as something that you make sure that you you do. You get a coach on board, you get a therapist on board. If, you know, like and same. You know, I am a proponent of therapy and coaches, obviously. And so I really feel like that's when God told me, sweetheart, you've done you've done a work, but you can't do the rest. You have to get someone on board, and so. Really having that as a strategy, I think it's irreplaceable. You absolutely have to have that. And then you talked about giving priority to the place where you know God is going to meet you. I love the way you put that. I love the way you put that because I also have that, you know, experiencing the, that peace and that calm and that quiet space where you can talk to God on a walk, on a nice long walk out in nature, just admiring the things that he has created, right? Giving yourself the time and space to silence your soul and get in tune with the voice of God and allowing him to speak to you is so incredibly powerful because you need the strength and that truth that comes straight from the father in order to continue sometimes, because again, like we said, life be life. And <laughs> just because you on purpose doesn't mean that you're exempt from the things that are going to go on in life. And so prioritizing, like you, that is so, I love the way you put that prioritizing this, the space and the place where you know that God is going to meet you. Um, and that could be a prayer closet. Maybe you, you know, and maybe for someone who's listening, maybe they haven't established that yet. Um, but maybe you need to establish a prayer time, a prayer closet, a prayer table, a prayer, you know, go out and take a walk. Sometimes we're so busy, we can't really, you know, the things that are going around in our household, we can't stop what's going on there. We might need to break away. And, you know, just like Jesus did when it was time to get silence and solitude, that's different from isolation, but that's a whole different conversation and get to the side somewhere where you can just be with God and listen to his voice. Um, allowing yourself to do that is so important and, and going to be such a strengthening and powerful tool. So really appreciate you pointing that out. Um, I just have to say that your tools, what you've shared with us, the obstacles that you have shared with us. Thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing them with us because I feel like it's a lot of us. A lot of us have, and especially with the communities that we tend to draw, that we are drawing women who have experienced trauma. They maybe have experienced, and that trauma maybe has come at the hands of someone else, some sort of abuse or some sort of um, relationship that broke down or or loss of a relationship, something that caused them to have some kind of traumatic response. And a lot of times those are the, the catalysts for the limiting beliefs and the lies that we start to believe about ourselves, to believe about what we're capable of, to believe about what we have access to. And so being able to share this in a way that points it really it all back to God and how he has given us the abundance and made it available to us um, is just so incredible. And I just want to thank you for sharing your vulnerability with us, sharing your tools and what you do and your strategies. I know it's going to be a blessing um, to everyone listening. And so if you can just share with us more about how we can connect with you, what work you're doing right now that we might be able to get in on and tap into what's going on that you might be able to um, be accessed by some of the people who are listening. So, you know, all things point back to my website, which is denisetaylor.live. Um, I have a pretty robust digital footprint, but Facebook is my playground. That's where I tend to show up most. So I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on TikTok. I will tell you, I avoid Twitter just because it just seems like a beast. And I just am not ready to take that on. Um, but pretty much everywhere else, you can find me with Denise Taylor Live or Denise Taylor dot live. Um, in terms of like what's going on for me now is I'm in the midst of open enrollment for my mentor program. It's a 60 day empowerment program. 
It's called Power Play. Um, and in that 60 day journey, it really is about embracing our power. As I said before, I believe that God has given us power. He hasn't given us fear. And my whole goal is to help you navigate through the fear that you feel and begin to show up in the ways that you know God is impressing you to do. Um, and so that journey, uh, the next cohort is in February and March. I offer it three, tw- three times a year, um, but we're in open re- enrollment. And so I invite anyone to go to my website and take a look at that. I have two podcasts, believe it or not. Embrace Your Power is one and I'm the good thing is the other. Um, Both of those go after two perspectives that I think is really important when it comes to building a life that you love. I'm the good thing is five minute episodes, three times a week that really is looking to energize you in a God kind of way with life wisdom. I consider those things that you can listen to while you're putting your makeup on or drinking your coffee or on your drive into work. It really is trying to help us get that notion and see ourselves the way God sees us. Mm -hmm. And Embrace Your Power and Go is lifting up stories of achievers who have overcome so that we can see that we can do it too. And so those two kind of make up the whole. And I invite anyone to take a listen to those. They're available wherever podcasts are, are, are uh, pretty much, you know, out there. So I invite you to, to listen in. And Nick, I'm so glad. I'm so glad one to see you stretching, uh, lifting your voice. It's a necessary thing. Uh, there are people who are waiting to hear you. And the key thing is there's life in your voice. So continue to press forward. And I am so excited about this new platform that you have here for Reshape the Soul. It's going to be a blessing for years to come. And I'm just glad to be uh, one of your early guests but I know that there will be many more to follow. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am honored that you would share those words of encouragement with me. Um, I truly believe that it is part of the, the growth that we've had is that, yes, you have to step out there. You have to continue to do what God has called you to do. Just step out there. You know, that would be my encouragement. Just step out there. Don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about it being, uh, don't compare. You know, sometimes I have to get on social media and get off because of the comparison thing. And so I would encourage anyone who's listening, who is struggling because they feel like I have so many things that keep blocking me. I feel like I'm blocked at every turn. Well, that's strategic. So what do you do? You answer that with strategy. And part of the strategy is some of the things you just heard today. Get in that prayer closet, get some time alone with God, get to that place where you know he's going to meet you, cry out in honesty, and then do the thing. Don't worry about what it looks like to someone else because your father will applaud you. And I just want to thank you again, Denise, so much for being here. I'm super excited about releasing this because I know a lot of people need it. This came straight from, this was a download straight from God that I needed to share with people obstacles and the strategies to overcoming those obstacles. So again, thank you for sharing yours and everyone get over to her website and, and check out the things that she's got going, listen to her podcast. They are true nuggets every time. Um, So again, so honored to have you today and we'll look forward to talking to you soon. All right. Thank you so much. (laughs) Bye. Well, that's it, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Don't ever forget that you are truly blessed with life, love, and all the happiness your heart can hold. Be relentless in building a life you love without apology. I'm Denise Taylor, and you can always find me in our free Facebook community. It's Embrace Your Power easy to find. Now be sure to rate and review this podcast and share it with a friend and make sure you subscribe so that we can stay connected each week. And remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He gave us power. So be sure to always embrace your power and go.